um, and the camera vandalism and all that goes with it. Um, just a word, if you would, Howard, on this ban of new petrol and diesel cars by 2030. Is it, is it even achievable? But putting aside the environmental arguments, is it practical? It certainly isn't, Ian, and hello, good afternoon. The, uh, the, the interesting thing is, about, about uh, six months ago, I, I presented a, a CBR report to the government regarding the environmental benefits from the proposed 2030 ban. Uh, I'm afraid they're dwarfed considerably by the additional costs. And let me give you an example. The environmental benefits from the 2030 ban add up to 76 billion. That sounds wonderful. But in contrast, the costs will add up to 400 billion, five times the benefits. Wow. That's, so what's the point of bankrupting the UK? Uh, well, that's the problem, isn't it? Because the, the sense is that this is going to, for, as far as some people are concerned, decimate an entire industry. Um, and, and how would it work when I, I just mentioned that if you wanted to buy a BMW in 2030, where do you buy one? Well, as I understand it, you could still get a diesel or petrol car from China uh, and you drive it over and bring it over here. The problem is, what's the incentive for garages to sell petrol and diesel? There's lots of things about supply of the fuel itself. But yeah, yeah. I don't think this is going to happen. I really do not think the 2030 ban is going to happen. I'm speaking to a lot of backbench Tory MPs and some quite senior, uh, experienced guys, and so, even a couple of ministers as well. And they're sort of winking at me, sort of a uh, constructive, don't worry, Howard, you're going to get what you want. Um, I'm still not sure what that means, whether that's actually we get rid of Sadiq Khan or get rid of the 2030 ban. That's uh, a very um, good point. Yeah, so we, which one will go first? There's the question. Well, I know which one you're hoping will go first, Howard, in that respect. I mean, just, just a word on Ulez and all that's happening there. Um, he, so he won his right to expand the scheme. And it is worth just pointing this out, that that judicial review wasn't making a, um, a, it wasn't an environmental debate, it was whether he had the right to do it, yeah? It was about whether he could legally do it, not whether it was the correct moral or ethical thing to do. Quite right. It wasn't about the decision of actually expanding the ULES to greater than the M25, it's about the process of how we arrived at that decision. Yeah. Fortunately, I've got to say, the Conservative councils and their barristers were, they were very weak in their argument because they didn't use the correct argument one of which was actually he manipulated a public consultation agreement mm. in terms of actually dishonestly actually he took 5,000 of my supporters uh, 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 anti or the responses anti the actual expansion he took those out and counted them as one whereas cyclists 4,000 of them saying they wanted it were counted as 4,000 surely that should be presented to the high court and those sorts of things he also ordered all the cameras before the public consultation results were known all of those sorts of things huge amount there's a, there's a litany of things of dishonesty in this and it's not it, it, and I, I i'm very disappointed in the conservatives not really hitting him hard on this fact which is perhaps i mean frustrations are running high and again nobody endorses criminal behavior you will have seen that imagery that talk tv uh, was was able to obtain of somebody vandalizing one of those ulez cameras this is in the bromley area where which which of course is is Greater London, so therefore it's part of the expansion. We're showing that footage yeah. now. We're, we're not endorsing criminal behaviour, but just like some of the antics with Just Stop Oil or the people that get very frustrated with the protesters, uh, regardless of uh, the illegality, you can kind of see why some people feel this passionate about it, this annoyed about it, this enraged about it. You're absolutely right, Ian. I couldn't have put it any better. This is this is not the right thing to do. We don't, don't condone criminal damage and breaking the law in this sense. But the frustration is that, to quote the UN uh, leader, is at global boiling levels. And these people are really, really frustrated beyond belief. It's ruining people's lives. And, and, and you had someone earlier, uh, I think, and I think uh, Mike had someone earlier as well, regarding actually the signage is not going to be put up in most of around London because most of the council is not going to allow it to happen. Wow. So we're going to have that that problem about people saying, I didn't know there was a ULEZ here. Because there were no signs. Exactly. So we're going to have those issues. But this is a wrong thing to do. And your previous speaker is quite right. They got to vote at the ballot box. Or better still, we maybe we should set up an anti-ULEZ party quickly. There it is. On that point, Howard, thank you. Howard Cox is the founder of Fair Fuel UK. He's Reform UK's London mayoral candidate.